it's Quinn from Humanities Alert. Uh, we got a lot to get through in books five through seven, so I'm going to hand it over to good old Drew Reynolds here, and let's get right into the book. So what I gathered from book five is a lot of foreshadowing about what's going to happen later in the book, and as well as a lot of parallels between humans and the gods. So my first passage is right on the second page, lines 21 through 31. And here Zeus says that he has declared that Odysseus shall return home and pay the traitors back, and Telemachus will sail home, and that the power is that of the gods. So what I find so powerful about this is that Homer chooses to reveal it so early in the book. It seems kind of strange, and I think that is up for some interesting discussion. Because truly, I don't even know the answer to my own question. I think it's a very interesting point to discuss. So, second passage is lines 103 through 105. And it, it does go on a lot longer, but these two lines were very important. Because this is where the goddess Calypso brings up some ambrosia mixed in deep red nectar for Hermes. And they eat and they drink together. And what's very interesting about this passage is that that's very, very similar, if not exactly what humans would do with each other. So it's very interesting that this is almost the same in between gods and men, and it shows how men empower the gods as creations of their own mind, not as unique or even really different beings. So last passage, lines 236 through 248. This is one of my favorite passages because it shows just how smart Odysseus is. And he says, Ah, oh, great goddess, please don't be angry with me, because I know that you're beautiful, I know that you are smart, and that my wise Penelope falls far short of you. But she is mortal, and you never age or die. But for some reason, he still longs for his wife, that human-to-human -human connection that gods just can't fulfill. So, that's all I have. And, oh, why is this a wise thing to say? Well, obviously... He's not going to get home without freeing Calypso. Being freed, freed from Calypso. Yeah, there we go. And the only way that he will return home is if he manages to get on the god's good side, which he already seems to have done up in the higher powers, but now the hierarchy needs to fall down to basically bless Odysseus, Odysseus on his ride home. will be in lines 65 through 84 and the question is what is the most important characteristic that Odysseus has had has during his time on Calypso's island and how does this resemble Achilles in the Iliad well the most important characteristic that Odysseus had was his determination and um, how he how he was so concentrated in and determined to get back home to his city and to his wife and son, that he was not distracted by, uh, by Calypso's enchanting island, unlike Hermes when he first got there. And how does this resemble Achilles in the Iliad? Well, Achilles in the Iliad has um, got his wife taken away from him by Agamemnon, and like Odysseus, his wife and his wife and and him and Achilles were separated at one point, and they and he was determined to get uh, revenge from Agamemnon and uh, to get back his wife. The second question will start in lines three hundred sixty-six through three hundred eighty-six. And the question is, who helps Odysseus get to safety after his boat got destroyed by Poseidon, and why would he or she help him? So, uh, Odysseus got helped, or, yeah, helped by Aino, and Aino is a mortal, is a mortal who got praised by her own citizens of her city so much that she became almost a goddess, or she became like a goddess. And she helped Odysseus with this scarf, this magical scarf that 
protected him through uh, Poseidon's fury. But not only that, she wanted to help Odysseus because she felt that connection uh, because they are both mortals. But And also, uh, she felt that she needed to help Odysseus because... Odysseus, uh, because there's something in Odysseus's character that just, that she knows that he is a good person and that he, uh, will do great things and has done great things. So the third question will be in lines 413 through 427. And the question is, who stopped Poseidon's colossal waves the second time? And how does this show how Zeus has more power in the Odyssey than in the Iliad? Well, Athena stopped Poseidon's waves because she felt pity for Odysseus. And this also goes back to his character and how he will do great things. And he has, has done, or he already has done great things. And how does this show Zeus has more power in the Odyssey than in the Iliad? Well, in the Iliad, Zeus wasn't for any side. Um, so, he he was in the middle of things. He didn't have much say or much power. And he, he didn't, he didn't, honestly, didn't care much about the war. He just didn't have that drive to help because there is no personal connection. And now in the Odyssey, Zeus, um, there, Zeus's daughter Athena is more interacted and helps Odysseus even more. So because uh, because Athena cares, Zeus cares. So he. So he uh, helps and has more control, and I feel like he has more control and power uh, because he is more inter interacted, or because he is more um, connected to the book and the story, and it, because his daughter Athena is helping uh, and connected to the story. here from Human Images Alert. Uh, today I'll be bringing you the uh, last section of book five. Um, so there's three important passages to get through and three key points. So let's get right back into the book. Okay, so the first section we're going to be going into is uh, are the lines 236 to 251, which I've uh, titled uh, Odysseus persuades in quotation marks as you can see on the slide, Calypso. See, uh, a lot of people missed this as they read through because I guess they might have been reading quickly and it's also kind of, I guess, it's just a very small line at the end of another section in the paragraph. But So, uh, I'm just going to read the last four lines of this section. Uh, e even, as he sp even as he spoke, the sun set and the darkness swept the earth. And now, withdrawing into the cavern's deep recesses, long in each other's arms, they lost themselves in, lo lost themselves in love. So, Calypso didn't just give Odysseus the tools he wanted to get on the journey. He had to, uh, I mean, earn them. I'm going to put that in quotation marks, too. Uh, he had to earn the, the right, I guess, to leave the island through uh, granting Calypso's one wish, which was to have Odysseus. And uh, in this, it shows that... Um, Calypso, I mean, getting her one wish of how, uh, uh, I mean, somewhat disobeying Zeus, which was uh, the fact that she thought she couldn't have Odysseus and all the other men that came to her island because Zeus hated goddesses and gods sleeping with mortals. But now that she's had this, she's ready to let Odysseus go. The question that goes along with this, uh, at what lengths was Odysseus willing to go to escape the island, which was uh, providing his love to Calypso? And why do you think Calypso's only desire is to have Odysseus? And obviously that's because 
she was lonely on the island, and also she wanted to uh, finally have a mortal man to herself, uh, like the others she had had before. And then the next section uh, is lines two or th- er, three sixty six. I'm sorry, and two three eighty six, which is uh, the section where Odysseus is given the immortal star. Okay, so uh, just to answer the question, let me go through it a little quicker. Uh, who gives Odysseus the scarf? Uh, I know, or Eno, however you would pronounce it, gives Odysseus the scarf in this section. And uh, the next part of that question is, what importance do you think the instructions you gave him will have? So I'm going to go through those two parts. The first part of the question, which is at 366, which is my first year book, it is, um, well, I know is the one who gives him the scarf. Um, and Cadmus's daughter is would be her her uh, epithet, and then uh, the instructions she gives Odysseus are ki- quite interesting. Uh, what she says is, um, I sh- I mean she's saying or er, thinking that she pities Odysseus and how he's just tormented by uh, Poseidon because he uh, blinded Polyphemus. Uh, she tells him. Here, take this scarf, tie it around your waist. It is immortal. Nothing to fear now, neither pain or nor death. But once you grasp the mainland with with your hands, untie it quickly, throw it into the wine-dark sea, far from the shore. But you, you turn your head away. So she's telling him, basically, take off your clothes, put on the scarf, and if you need to, swim to shore with it. And when you get to the shore, throw it away as quickly as possible, even though it's uh, supposedly uh, some uh, immortal scarf that will uh, get rid of his fears and also keep him from dying. What I find quite interesting about this is she doesn't really explain why he has to throw it away when he gets there, which is my my question is, what importance do you think the instructions she gave him will have? Why does he have to throw the scarf away? Is there some sort of... I feel like this is some sort of foreshadowing that we'll see in one of the later books. Okay, so the next part is uh, lines 413 through 428, which is when Poseidon's rage or fury to uh, att- once again attempt to kill Odysseus, and uh, how this is subdued by Athena. So uh, in this part, the mighty god of earthquakes, which would be Poseidon, that's his epithet, um, tries to basically get Odysseus's boat broken so he can't possibly get back to the shore and just kind of <laughs> bombard him with waves and winds and whatnot. So, but, and then as soon as he does this, uh, he, so he, it says in the book, once again, starting at line 418, with a threat he lashed his team with their long flowing manes, gaining a gay pull, I don't know how to say that, I'm sorry, port where his famous palace stands. But Zeus's daughter Athena countered him to, at once. The rest of the winds she stopped right in their track, commanding them all to hush now to go to sleep. All but the boisterous north, she whisk- whipped him up, and the goddess beat the breakers flat before Odysseus, dear to Zeus, so he could reach the Phasians. So, uh, what this is basically saying is, in this part, I would definitely say is, uh, so Poseidon is trying to stop Odysseus from getting the land by just destroying his boat and his path with winds, and Athena stops this, and, well, you already know why, because, uh, Athena dearly pities, uh, Poseidon, or er, Odysseus, and the reason I think this is, not just because she pities him, just is why she stopped Poseidon, but be- also because for this story to develop um, in a more concrete way I'm going at this would be he has to restore the polis which would be Odysseus getting help so she has to help him also in turn uh, just the fates um, are also causing her to do this because it is fated for Odysseus to return home now uh, the n- part I find also very interesting is uh, where is it it's let me find my part real quick I'm sorry uh, oh yes, it's uh, at the very end of the section at 428. It says, "So he could escape his last de- uh, death at last." So uh, this is basically saying, uh, Poseidon's been ruthlessly just trying to kill and stop Odysseus from getting home, and this, uh, I guess, is some sort of foreshadowing that this may be one of the last times that uh, Odysseus 
will have to um, face Poseidon's wrath at saying um, so he can esca Odysseus can escape his death at last when he reaches the Phasians. Uh, I think this really shows how hard the journey has been uh, for Odysseus. All of the challenges that have been thrown at him by Poseidon and all of these other things like being trapped on Calypso's island and assaulted poly Polythemus before the book starts, obviously. Uh, the Polythemus part. And it just shows you the perseverance he has. While um, Achilles didn't have as much perseverance and had more, I guess, raw and brute strength, uh, Odysseus has this quality of, like, he, although he may uh, express his emotions more openly, uh, you do get more of a sense of perseverance here rather than Achilles. Um, I mean, comparing the two in terms of uh, Achilles came back into battle when his friend was killed, and I would say that's not perseverance, more so being sparked by something or uh, ignited. And then uh, Odysseus has this constant passion, no matter what happens to him, after grieving to continue on, rather than, uh, in <laughs> Achilles' case, sitting in a hut and playing a lyre, uh, singing sad, sad songs. Uh, well, this concludes the end of my section, and uh, I hope you enjoyed listening. Into book seven, lines one through one ninety-seven. Uh, the first passage is about Odysseus's guide, lines thirty-four through forty-eight. And the uh, key point here is: what does Odysseus ask Athena as a young girl to do for him, and how does this show his character traits as an epic hero? So, at the beginning of this passage, we see that Odysseus um, gets stopped by a young girl, and he asked asks her to guide him to the palace and this shows his character traits that although being a hero he's a different kind of hero than we see in the Iliad because he's more like he's more wise and humble that he'll rely on a girl just to guide him and rather than just storm in and try to kill everyone to fight his way to the palace so it just shows that he's a he's a different hero than everyone else uh, the second passage is Odysseus's disguise, and this is through most of the book. And the question is, how is Odysseus shielded, and how does this represent the theme of honor and glory in the Odyssey? So, in this passage, o Odysseus is shielded by a veil of mist by Athena, and this represents the theme of honor and glory that he'll just use cunning and he'll be wise and smart just to be disguised and avoid conf confrontation rather than just storm in and proclaim his family name and that he's the king of Ithaca and all that. So very different from uh, Achilles in this respect. Uh, the third passage is li um, lines 182 through 197, the uh, Phaeacenians hospitality. And the key point here is how did the Phaeacenians treat Odysseus, and what does this tell us about Greek customs and culture? So as I flip to the lines here, Odysseus, he pleased with the queen to take him, give him passage to Ithaca, and immediately they, they feed him and they offer to take him back and all this. So it shows Greek customs and culture about how hospitality is really important in their culture and for travelers and visitors and guests. And that's all for book seven. In book seven, lines 198 through 408, there are three passages that should be reread closely. This includes lines 232 through 247 lines 277 through 341, and lines 346 through 352. Some key questions for this passage are, what do the Phaeacians think Odysseus is, and why might this relate to why they're so hospitable? In lines 234 and 235, uh, it says, but if he's one of the deathless powers out of the blue, which means uh, that they think that he's a god disguised as a mortal. And when a god shows up at someone's house, the owner is expected to provide for them. And since the owner can't tell the difference between a 
a disguised God and a mortal man, uh, they provide to everybody. Question two is, why does Odysseus refrain from giving his identity to the Phaeacians, and how might this show his character? Earlier in Book 7, Athena tells Odysseus that they have very fast ships which were gifts from Poseidon. And we also know that Poseidon isn't very happy with Odysseus. So telling everybody that Poseidon doesn't like you when they all are very close to Poseidon wouldn't be a very good idea. Uh, this shows Odysseus is smart and cunning because he uh, withholds this information so he can get help easier. Question three is, what does Odysseus say to Elsinoos about Nausicaa, and how does this help him gain the trust of the Xenophobic Phaeacians? Um, after, after Odysseus finishes telling the story about he, how he got his clothes from Nausicaa, the king Elsinoos, who, um, who is Nausicaa's father, um, is mad at Nausicaa because she didn't lead him directly to the palace. Um, and Odysseus says that she actually wanted him to bring her to the... She actually wanted him to go to the palace with her, but he decided to go alone. Now, this um, impresses Alcinous so much that he offers, offers Nausicaa to him in marriage, and that shows that he gained the trust of the Phaeacians. From Humanities Alert here, signing off. Uh, come to our YouTube channel, Humanities Alert. Like, comment, subscribe, and uh, if you need anything, email at us at humanitiesalert at gmail.com. Have a great day. And just remember, let's get right back into the book. <laughs>